All right, we're going to talk about how to find area of composite figures. So when you have these, you need to cut them into basic shapes that you know. So here I have a rectangle and a triangle. It helps if you will redraw these so you can see all the side lengths. So this is a 6 by 10. And I know that the area for a rectangle is length times width. So that's 6 times 10, which is 60 inches squared. Now I have a triangle. This triangle has a base of, if this whole bottom is 10, and I'm not using this 6, I'm left over with 4 for my base, and then I have a height of 4. So my triangle has a base of 4 and a height of 4. The formula for a triangle is half of a rectangle. So we say 1 half base times height, which is the same thing as the base times height divided by 2. 4 times 4 is 16, and half of 16 is 8. To find the area of a composite figure, I have to add these two numbers together. 60 plus 8 is 68 inches squared. Let's look at number 2. Find the area of the figure. So for this figure, we have a rectangle and a circle. Actually, we have half of a circle. So my rectangle is 1.5 centimeters by 9 and 2 tenths centimeters. And we just said that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So that's 1 and a half times 9 and 2 tenths, which is 13 and 8 tenths centimeters squared. Now for my semicircle, I have to use the formula area equals pi times radius squared, and we often use 3.14 to estimate pi as it is stated in the directions. To find the radius, I'm given the diameter of this circle, although I need to figure out what that is. The whole length of the shape is 9 and 2 tenths but I'm not using this two and a half. So I will subtract nine and two tenths minus two and a half to get that the circle has a diameter of six and seven tenths. The diameter goes all the way through the circle, but the radius only goes halfway. So I need to divide that number by two and get that my radius is three and 35 hundredths. Now I use the order of operations to solve. 3 and 35 hundredths squared is 11.2225, but I'm just going to round that to 11 and 22 hundredths. Then I will multiply 3.14 times 11 and 22 hundredths, and that is about 35 and 23 hundredths. I round it again. So that's the area for a whole circle with a radius of 3.35, but I only have half of that. So I'm going to divide this number by 2 to get that the area is 17.62 centimeters squared. 
And of course, the last thing that we do is add these two numbers together. I have 17.62 plus the rectangle. And that is 31.42 centimeters squared, which rounds to 31 and 4 tenths centimeters squared. Let's look at number three. These are pretty easy when you have two rectangles. You can cut vertically or horizontally. It does not matter. I can easily see this small rectangle that is 5 by 2. And that's length times width because it's a rectangle. And we know that 5 times 2 is 10. But then this big one, I have a height of 14, but my width, it doesn't give me that. It gives me that the whole bottom is 16, but I've already used this 5. So I'm going to have to take away 5 from this bottom and get that my width is 11. So I have this big rectangle that has a height of 14 and a base of 11. So I'm going to multiply those two numbers together and get 154 meters squared. Now rectangles are really easy because all I have to do now is add those two numbers together and that is 164 square meters. Number four says a blueprint, on a blueprint, a rectangular room 15 by 14 has a semicircular sitting area attached with a diameter of 14 feet. What is the total area of the room and the sitting area? So again, we're dealing with a composite figure. We've got a rectangle that is 15 by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and find the area of a 15 by 14 rectangular shape. And that is 210 square feet. For this semicircle, I have a diameter of 14, but we know that the formula is pi times radius squared. So I need the radius, not the diameter. Well, if the diameter is 14, then the radius is going to be half of that, which is 7. Order of operation says we have to do exponents first. 7 squared is 49. And 3.14 times 49 is 153 and 86 hundredths. But this is half of that circle, so I have to divide by 2. We have to pay attention to what is happening with our shapes. And that rounds... 76 and 93 hundredths. So now I'll add my two numbers. 210 plus 76 and 93 hundredths is 286 and 93 square feet. 286 and 93 hundredths. And it gives you your unit of square feet. Number five is a bit of an odd shape, but we're just going to take what we know. Let's start with our triangle. This triangle has a base of eight and a height of six. And I know that a triangle is half of a rectangle. So I'm going to multiply base times height, which is 48, and then divide by two or take half of that, which is 24 square feet. For my semicircle, it shows us very clearly that the diameter is 10, but we know that we need the radius. So half of 10 is 5, so that's 3.14 times 5 squared. Square your radius first. That's 5 times 5, not 5 times 2, 
5 times 5, and that's 25. 3.14 times 25 is 78 and a half. But we're looking at half of a circle, so we need half of that area. That's 39 and 25 hundredths. So now I add these two numbers together. And that is 63 and 25 hundredths. And it gives us our unit of square feet. And the last one. Don't make this one too complicated. Really, all you have to do is cut straight on this side. And you will see this rectangle that is 6 by 18. And we know that's length times width. which is 108. Now I have this triangle that we need to figure out the measurements on. Now, some of you would see that this is six inches at the top and when you take 18 and you subtract the 6, that leaves you with a height of 12. For everything that we're going to be doing, you would have been given this number, okay? So I'm not going to count this one on the quiz, or I'll count it for bonus points or whatever. This whole bottom is 15, and I've already used this 6. So 15 minus 6 is 9. That leaves me with a base of 9. So I'm going to multiply the base times the height. And that's 108. But this is half of a rectangle because it's a triangle, which means we're going to divide that by 2, or take half of that, which is 54. And then when I add these two numbers together, I get 162 square inches. So for the rest of the class period, you're going to go to Google Classroom. There's a hyperdoc for surface area that's going to start with a Generation Genius video. And then you will have problems to complete within the hyperdoc. And you need to answer all of the questions and make sure you turn it in when you are finished.